Maybe you fucked it up again. Okay. Can now you... we should both be there. I think we're good. So everybody say something. Sound off. Adeline. Satchel. The Pirates of the Caribbean films aren't that great. Keisha, how fucking oh dare you? Oh my god. <laughs> Keisha? It's kind of oh, fucked up of your parents to name you that. That <laughs> no one said I had to say my name. That is a really fucked up thing to say, Keisha. <laughs> God, that's the most problematic thing we've said on the podcast. Okay, okay, we're, we're here now. We're I don't know. Here. I don't know I what I did to fix it, story. but I didn't have to start. Please a new tell stream. me you heard the Pirates of the Caribbean goof, please. Can you just get you canceled? <laughs> Your only lifeline right now. Okay, okay. Now I gotta go to Twitter and post the link on Twitter again, and everything sucks, and I hate this show, and I'm resentful of the fact that I do it for you guys. I hate I our fans. And I'm not having fun, and I don't like everybody who's there in the chat. Do you have a library card? <laughs> yes, why? Because having fun having isn't fun hard! Is hard when you've got a library card. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so glad that, like, as soon as you said that, I was like, <gasps> Can I tell you the oh, God's god. honest truth? I got a library card pretty recently in Utah, um, and I signed up for the audiobook service, and I've been reading the books on, in the Annihilation trilogy, and they fucking rule. Nice. The first three are Greg. <laughs> I don't know Greg, so... Ah, uh, hi, it's me, Greg. Listen, I don't... I don't have I'm so, to say about I'm the so glad I found that so funny. I've only seen one of them. First one's a classic of Pirates of the Caribbean or Spy yeah, Kids. What I've seen the about? first one. Oh, Spy Kids, I've seen all the Spy Kids. And I think <laughs> that the Spy Kids films hold a lot more. Do you Wait, the Spider I'm Monkey friends. from Spy Kids? What the fuck was uh, up with that? Spy thing? Kids how too, do you not like? Agree. How do you not like Curse of the Black Pearl? I truly can't understand that. Curse of the Black Pearl. That's the only one I've seen, and I like it. It's good. I'm just not a pirate person. Oh, okay. I'm not a. I'm, I'm not in a squash. Not a pirate person who isn't a pirate person. My, I, I, <laughs> Jake and the Neverland Pirates don't care for it. That, uh, Captain Captain, what was the? I'm the captain now. Captain Phillips. Didn't watch it. Captain Phillips. Doug Lyman's Captain, Captain Phillips. Captain Davis. Uh, what are other pirates in the in the popular mainstream? Um, there's the pirate from the uh the the thing, the like uh lazy town Captain pirate. Morgan. Oh. Is that Captain Morgan? I'm not no, Captain person. Morgan is the lazy the town? Rum. Captain Morgan I is the alcohol. Something. Yeah. I like I thought I there is an exception to the rule, which is the pirates who don't do anything from Betty Tales. Right, pirates who don't do yeah. anything. But it's be mostly because they just lay at home and don't do anything. So yeah. they don't do anything. They don't K do any swashbuckling. You're not on board for she these said things. pirates don't have rights and they shouldn't be able to do anything. That's kind of cringe. <laughs> That's kinda... No, I'm not saying pirates don't have rights. I'm just comes out as anti-pirate. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know if I'm... I have to watch Anti-pirate. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just don't know if I'm, like, comfortable to, like, you know, be, um, yeah, be like, skinny with, like, an anti-pirate. I'm with Cade. You wanna, Cade? Yeah, you like it better because there's no pirates in Spy Kids. Yeah, it's just <laughs> yeah. Cool. You should like this movie then. Yeah, there's no pirates in New Mutants. Spoiler alert! Said, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. That if I don't like one element of a movie, that means I like every movie that doesn't include that element. <laughs> That's why you like Cars because there's no pirates in Cars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. 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 I'm sorry. I'm, I will start engaging with you guys more in just a second. I am frantically trying to tweet out a new link and make sure everything works. It's all good. We got five we'll keep people. The space That's open. The, the usual gang. Mm. The gang's all here. Yeah. Oh, wait. I like Patchy the Pirate. Oh, Patchy the Pirate. That's one. Yeah. Love Patchy the Pirate. Patchy the Pirate. Is that the SpongeBob one? Yes, yes. absolutely. 100 P. He's not even a real pirate. Just yes, like, he is. How dare you? It's, he just he sits in like a regular ass house. Pirates who just dress as pirates and don't do anything piratey. Yeah, he just you like fake pirates. God. Yes, thank you. Exactly. Compared to these fake pirate girls. Oh my god. Oh, pirates you're a who pirate? love SpongeBob. Name five cities you plundered. Shoplifting <laughs> is not piracy. <laughs> you wouldn't steal a car. 
pirate. So you're not a pirate. I don't know. That was my version of book. mobile games aren't real games. I don't know. Whatever. You know what aren't real games? Mind games. What? Whoa. Oh. Pirates of Penzance. I don't know anything about Pirates of Penzance, Ian. I'm Pirates sorry. Pirates of Penzance is good. Fine. I don't know. Maybe I just am not consuming the right pirate media. But I just don't think pirates Musical. are for me. Well, games aren't real games. I don't know. Whatever. Or oh wait, I was a pirate. You know what? Aren't real games. Actually, no, I think games. about it. Pizza, do you hate yourself? You betrayed pirates yourself. I don't know anything yeah, about pirates. I just of thought, Ian. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. You might as well good. try it. Give it a chance. I uh, didn't care for it. I thought the pirate was the friends we made along the way. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. I'm I was gonna do one pirate. last thing. I'm gonna put a link in Tasha's Discord. Sick. I love I mean, Hey, I'm an eighth grader, and I thought you just said dick, and I thought it was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be over here if anybody needs me. <laughs> Poor pirate. You guys like the SpongeBob SquarePants musical? pretty good like not gonna lie i've heard the music and costumes are fun i know they might be okay. giants almost won a tony for it but they didn't and i was mad about it even though i yeah. had the song i want them they might be trying to get that egot <laughs> it's so their song is so funny it's the, squidward sings it about not being a loser really yeah i heard, yeah, I heard that song incredible. it's like he's in the like, blues clues <laughs> movie where steve's like i can't ever find a clue and you're like he's self-aware now and it just means <laughs> everything Jackson, are we? You can't bring that up without talking about how you cried for like five hours when you watched that movie for the first time. <laughs> I was a four-year-old and I cried yes. at a movie. I didn't cry for like five hours. You cried for a long time. That's a part of the story. <laughs> Adeline, you were not alive. But I am a member of this family, and I have heard the story okay. many a time. Also, you were four <laughs> one, so ha. <laughs> okay. What, what was there. the first piece of media you cried to, Adeline? I don't. There's not a family funny story about it, so I don't know. I know what mine is. It's Piglet's big move or Piglet's big movie, not Piglet's big move. <laughs> big move. Yeah, what about moving Piglet's away big from the Hundred Acre Woods? He's gonna yeah, go he's like, I'm leaving. Yeah, that's yeah, why you're like, crying. I got a new job. Yeah, he's gonna try and make it as a writer <laughs> in the big city. Actually, yeah, wait, I, I, I did think, think it was very ambitious of them to show not only piglet um you know trying to explore his own (laughs) self but to also fail um in doing so and then just like openly weep for solid that's pretty upsetting especially since he's a five-year-old stuffed animal and it's upsetting it's it's cathartic to watch though it it strikes a chord yeah yeah for sure like it's it's this it's this kind of like misery hellscape that you can't look away from (laughs) yeah directed by joker off of it (laughs) yeah away yeah (laughs) we're all having fun here it was actually the tigger movie now that i think about it that one came out first no but probably it's winnie the pooh it's so sad uh, dies. <laughs> no, he... A movie what? people don't have to die for a movie to be sad out of line. We already we already considered it. <laughs> we had this conversation already. <laughs> wait, wait, Finding wait, Nemo. What? Nothing. Just talking about cars Nemo? again. Finding cars. Nemo is sob inducing five sure. It just didn't come first. Mm, doubt. Heart doubt. <laughs> The movie's a gaff the whole way through. Or it's bad or it's stressful. I never cry. Because you're like, oh man, is he going to fix the road in time? And then you cry. Because, oh, he's 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 going to leave. I've actually never you're cried right. before. Because I'm very Liar. cool and tough. Damn. You're a man. Yeah. You cried at the at the that's so cool. movie. <laughs> no, that's slander. <laughs> oh, you're a man? Name every time... Uh, that you <laughs> made it in every movie that made you cry. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah. every time you didn't cry in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> maybe every time that you've stated the fact you have not cried. Yeah. In a while. <laughs> you had the chance to, and you did it. Every yeah. every instance you could have cried, but held but, it back. but chose not to. <laughs> you cho- you had the you had the choice, the free will. Oh, what, this whatever, is a fun game. Whatever my. <laughs> 
whenever my friend feels vulnerable enough around me to cry, I'll just I'll sit back and I'll be like, huh, huh, I didn't cry because I'm a man. <laughs> I also felt vulnerable, but <laughs> no tears. No <laughs> tears. <laughs> no tears. <laughs> Whereas I don't, don't even feel name vulnerable. The last and thing I cry. that you cried at. Something that's funny to me is that for a long time, it was sort of a talking point around Marvel movies, like, in terms of, like, their portrayal of masculinity, that, like, none of the heroes ever cry in Marvel movies. And then, like, uh, Infin- Rocket. And then, like Infinity War and Endgame came out, where people are just, like, crying all over the place, all over those movies. Yeah. <laughs> people stop Guardians of the that. Galaxy 2 came out before those. Oh, yeah, I guess Chris Pratt does cry in that. No! Rocket! Coon. No, I have a close up of a tear. The first one. Space. Does he cry in the first one? Oh yeah, because Groot dies. Right. But spoiler alert. Rocket Raccoon but isn't a stoic, a strong white man. Is the thing. Yeah. That's true. He's a strong raccoon man. Yeah. <laughs> He's a strong, yeah. independent raccoon. <laughs> um, Cade. The first book that made me cry was Where the Red Fern Grows. So we have that in common. Yeah, everybody has trauma based around red, Where the Red Fern Grows. We I all wanna, been do. I want to go back and read Where the Red Fern Grows again because like... Yeah, because you apparently had a fundamental misremembering of how that book goes. <laughs> well, I just... I know for certain that one of the dogs gets attacked by a cougar and dies and then the other one dies of sadness because of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... Um. I don't remember what it was. I just don't. I, it's. I'm sure it's good, because we're still talking about it. As a kid, I hated it because it made me sad, and I was like, "That's dumb. Why would I want to be sad?" Yeah. Uh, but maybe I'm a man. Was, I'm not supposed to be that. Exactly. It made me want to cry, but I didn't. Oh, <laughs> I just, and because you're a man, right? I just I wanted to cry. A memory. Does anybody remember? You boys probably don't cause hit men, but do you remember in the <laughs> library they would have this series? It was like this series of books, and every book was like about like a different like princess or like girl, and they were like historical books. What was it called? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? I don't remember the series, uh... called. but there was one. It was, one of them was like about like a girl, like the princess in India, and I just remember her dad dies, and I cried, okay. and that was the first time I cried at a book. Oh, anybody you know, know what the book? fuck I'm talking about? I don't know. No idea. Did you guys have Bailey School Kids? Oh yeah. No. There was like a series what? of young adult, not young adult, a series of children's, <laughs> young adult a series of children's novels <laughs> where the first one was like my babysitter's a zombie, and then it went on for like a hundred books don't after wear that. Polka up. Where it was oh, like, is this like is this like my oh my gym teacher's a vampire? This is like that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah there was like a yeah. different Those figure, a figure in a kid's life is a. Kind of it archetypal monster. monster. That's a thing. Yeah, and a monster. It's like yeah, the soccer I remember. coach is a zombie. I remember there was one where the soccer coach was a zombie, and the cover really freaked me out. <laughs> the camp counselor is a werewolf. I no, I was a, I, I was a those books. kid. Um, My dad is a cop. Both are good. The, not the blob. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. As sorry, Adeline said, my dad is a cop, and that was really, really funny. I didn't. Want my dad is a cop. <laughs> my dad's a cop. Yeah. I love. I love the picture of that series of books next to each other. My gym teacher is a zombie. My teacher is the thing from the back Black Lagoon. My dad's dad is a cop. cop. <laughs> my dad's a cop. <laughs> yeah, they're all. They're all creepy. Creepy creatures, creepy crawlies. I'm looking at this cover because I have a really specific memory of this cover freaking me out as a kid, and I don't understand why. I'm gonna put it in the Discord and on the the stream, okay, real quick. Because there I doesn't the seem to be anything especially frightening about it. Yeah, I don't know. I remember the Twitter post that was like, that was like, why do all of these dudes look like twinks? You know. <laughs> Like they're all like, <laughs> they're all like specifically illustrated, um, in a way that like all all of these like the like gym teacher that was like a werewolf is like, like they're all like very flamboyant, um, and so there's like a Twitter thread <laughs> mm-hmm. about it. But that's all I that's all I know. This was the this was Stop the. Play soccer. I think I yeah. think I kind of get it. It's a little disturbing it that she doesn't me. look 
like a green zombie. She just looks like a human person. So like, yeah, she's not zombie. I'm like, enough. hey, that's a corpse. I don't know. I think that's pretty disturbing. I get it. Yeah. Okay. And it just looks like a tired lady. Did the people? <laughs> but they tell you it's they, a zombie. Like, they tell you it's a corpse. <laughs> Were they actually monsters, or was it like one of those things where it's like, this is a scary person that like we learn to accept? I truly it, don't. Remember. It was ambiguous. Ooh, Ooh. We could be both, but probably Ambiguity. not a monster because they're people that look different. Scooby <laughs> Doo taught me that the real monsters all these... are people. Yeah, all these kids exactly. were like, yeah, "You were ugly. You're probably a monster." <laughs> They're like, ugly? "Oh my god, our camp counselor is like a werewolf or something, and he just has a lot of body hair. He's just like, <laughs> like a beard. Yeah. For one <laughs> just like some nineteen year old kid." There's one I'm seeing here that's called "Dragons Don't Cook Pizza," and I'm really trying to wrap my brain around how the kids could have thought somebody in their uh, life. Was what a miscommunication yeah. led to them <laughs> thinking that this person is a dragon? <laughs> My neighbor is like, Scaly. I think it's partly the like pizza oven. I read all of these books when I was a kid, but I don't. Oh yeah, the Cupid one. Oh, so good. The Cuban one. Yeah. <laughs> My. They're like. There's My one. It's Cupid. A Cuban. Cuban. <laughs> no, no, no. The lunch lady is Cupid. Oh, Cupid. And she serves only oh. Cupid. What did you think I said? Cupid. Cuban. A person from Cuba. <laughs> Like Cuban, you Cupid. Know, Cupid. zombie, werewolf, person Cuban. from Cuba. From Cuba. <laughs> it's so good. What is this? The sixties? Do you think I could appropriately Photoshop one of these so it just says like, my math teacher looks like he's from Cuba? <laughs> yeah, my see. math teacher is racially ambiguous, and I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> There's one that's aliens don't wear braces, and it's just a woman with a a weirdly shaped face and long white hair, and that's just so horrible. Yeah, yeah no, is... one of these like... is always like, my neighbor killed his wife, and he's just like a sad old man whose wife died, and <laughs> yeah. he's Huge apples. Yeah, this is a very a very problematic sort of conceit. Yeah, maybe these kids are just mean. Yeah, yeah, they're like, oh, someone looks abnormal to you. They're probably Frankenstein. Here's one called <laughs> Hercules Doesn't Pull Teeth. Bro, I okay. just clicked on that just one. Just like a fucking That's hunky a ass dude That's at the dentist's office. Figure yeah. That I feel like you would be thrilled to see. I would be thrilled to see Hercules. <laughs> well, Hercules is a myth. And I want all another of one to be like, Jesus doesn't myth. shoot yeah. hoops. And it's just like this guy. <laughs> Except hair. for he does know. shoot hoops, bro. He does shoot hoops. I know. Dracula yeah. doesn't no, shoot hoops. Jesus schooled me on the court the other night, so for yeah, sure no. he's shooting <laughs> hoops. There yeah. are different. He's... There are different books for ghosts and ghouls. Yeah, yeah, because they're those are different. They're different. Genies yeah. don't ride bicycles. That's just gotta be racist. It's gotta. <laughs> be. <laughs> yeah, you kind of. Yeah, it, it's just gonna be a guy like a Middle That's, Eastern looking guy. Yes, and his kids it's just someone just... brown, and they're like, he's a genie. He's a genie. <laughs> yeah, he's a genie. There's the only one. Oh, oh, this is just this is just racial profiling in the series. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Still fun though. You fun gotta fun. teach him young. I was obsessed. Oh with no! It was Santa like this. Doesn't mop floors. <laughs> and, uh, I Wait, never got you say, Keisha? Wait, one. One. Don't wear pink sunglasses. <laughs> Who doesn't wear teach? pink sunglasses? I think they had a gay teacher, and they thought it was a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what you're talking about. It's like, <laughs> like Tobias on Arrested Development. <laughs> yeah, I think, it's, I think it's the pirate. I think the genie, the vampire, and the werewolf were all in like the Twitter post because they're just like slightly flamboyant men who dress strangely. <laughs> and they're yeah. just like, oh, monsters. Monsters. <laughs> they're like, ugh. Okay. Man, be so hairy and wear pink sunglasses. Do we want to like, start a show where we like... talk about New Mutants anytime soon? Oh, oh, nah. me, me. oh, wait, we're supposed to watch oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just reread this book series. I, yeah, I actually <laughs> deleted all the memories and replaced them with with Bailey School uh, Kids. <laughs> Bailey a oh. podcast about Bailey School Bailey Kids. School Kids. <laughs> oh God, uh, we should do that. Right. We should read more right. books. We should have a book club. That would be fun. I think. Oh, 
Let's do a book club. Hey, hey, audience. If we did a book club podcast episode, would that be fun? Would that be a good time? We would have to pick. Maybe we just only do like kids books that are like 45 yeah. pages long. No, yeah, absolutely. That's what makes it funny. Bear, go very like yeah. We take one, a single Bailey school kid. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Like one hundo P. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, maybe we'll try that. Okay, does everybody have uh, audition open up or whatever you're gonna use? Uh, hold on, I'm working on it. Well, I'm just gonna I, write I, down I, everything I say. Were we not supposed to? Have you been recording the whole time? I sorry, I thought we were like going. All right, uh, I can. Yeah, stop. go ahead and delete what you have. We're gonna start recording at a certain point. <clears throat> <That's good. laughs> oh my god, audition is working for once. What is this? Because we the like Christmas to have some miracle. content that's exclusive to the stream, you know? Ex- exclusive. Get some exclusives for the people. If you're not here. here, you'd miss it. And hey, thanks in the chat. I don't know who you are. Your username is two hexagons, but I don't think no, I've seen a, you in this chat before, and I appreciate you being here. The little snowflake. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to put yeah, the... snowflake. snowflake. I'm going to put the... Sorry. I'm going to put the dabbing emoji in. Because I love it. Okay, sure. There he is. <laughs> he's pretty good. I like him. Yeah, he's good. I like what him too. What do you have too. to do to get custom Here's a social disc. emojis? I'd have YouTube. to make them, is what it is. We could okay. get a woke Beetlejuice emote. That'd be fun. We could. We could get woke Beetlejuice. We could get uh, Dumbledore saying it do be like that sometimes. Oh, uh, yeah. I have almost <laughs> forgot about that. That's a classic bit of it's ours. It's a classic. You can get uh, Snape is a your uwu baby. We talked right, about right. Harry Potter a lot. Yeah, we did eight Harry Potter episodes. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I don't regret it's it. Inevitable. Harry Potter talk. <laughs> do you guys? I was thinking about this the other day. After we finish up Star Wars, do you guys want to do the two direct to television Ewok movies? <laughs> Oh my god. I have never heard of these. What? In the 80s after yeah. Return of the Jedi came out on like ABC or whatever, they made two made for TV movies about Ewoks that were called like The Caravan of Courage or something. <laughs> oh. Wow, it sounds it sounds in, invigorating and thrilling. Wow. <laughs> I think we have to. Okay, now. yeah. If we're going to do the Christmas special, yeah. we got to do that. Yeah. Whatever's god. canon. Nice. Kate, are you talking about the hexagon in that person's yeah. username? Yeah. It's just a hexagon though. No, it's like they're like they're like little eyeballs. Look at it. Oh, oh you, you mean the eyeball. specific combination of the hexagon with the little circle? No, that hexagon shape. It's not a hexagon, Jackson. I yes, think your computer's is. just dumb. No, it's like it's... a bunch of little circles all together. And it's oh. in the shape of a hexagon. It's... Oh, my I my display like, I literally is just a hexagon. I don't want to think about it as eyeballs. No, because it's, <laughs> it's like it's like the biblical angels. They're like the rotating right. spheres of fire and hell, and they're like, "Hey, don't afraid. freak out! Please don't freak angels. out! Oh God, Wait, please it, don't stop! Those... Hold on!" Like, is that actually what it means? Is like the Cirilla character that means the many-eyed one? Yeah. I don't oh. know. According to Cade. God. And the person. Okay. And pretty. <laughs> An yeah. eyeball one. And yeah, this person and is eyeball. 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 to by name. Well, consider I... one. Yeah, consider me uh, be afraid, alright? Uh... <laughs> What's your name? I know Come their on. name. I know their name. Eileen. A... Okay, well. I'll leave <laughs> now. That's all <laughs> I used up all my... I used uh... everything up. See you guys. It's been really nice. Yeah, Hi, Satch. Well, if you can have, we can come on some other time. Yeah, we'll we fire Kate even... before we ask you to come back, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, are we ready to Should we start recording? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's do this thing. All right. Okay. <clears throat> One moment. New mutes. <laughs> More like. Oh, fuck. I got the it's... wrong input. Uh, set us out. Set us away. Give us it. Give us the bit. We're like the... um old old toots. students. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's why I call the X Men. Yeah. <laughs> That's my name for the X Men. Uh, uh, default input microphone. Yes, I want to use the microphone. Testing, testing. Okay. 
Sorry about that, guys. Okay, are we all ready to start? Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. Go for it. We're going to go Jackson, Adeline, Keisha, and Satch. <clears throat> when? Dark. Eyeballs. R. Scary. I. Run. Away. Quickly. Because. I don't like eyeballs. Okay, that was a boring sentence, but it served its purpose. No, but it sure yeah, yeah, yeah. was a sentence. When are they good? <laughs> that you're you trying to what? make them good. The I'm aspiration sorry. is for them to be good. I have good. a connection. I have a connector words. There's nothing I could do to make them more. Ex- <laughs> Last time I tried to make them exciting, you told me they didn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I try to get an adverb in there, and y'all just flip. Oh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> in chat, I'm just noticing they said their name is... Is it Mez? Mez? Whatever. But oh, I've yes. seen you around. I do. I am aware yeah. of you. Thank you for I tuning up. We on appreciate the Twitter. it. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in, folks. What's Thanks the... to viewers like you. Okay, okay. Jackson, Every... do, the, do the, the warrior whispers to the No, no, no. Storm. Everybody shush. This, I have a different thing. <clears throat> We don't need no education. Jackson, I hate to ruin this for you, but Discord can barely pick that up. We don't need no thought control. We don't need no my ears. Education. Jackson. Jackson. What? This is a bit that only you get. <laughs> what do you mean? That's what was in the trailer. No, that was in the trailer. Oh, that, that, that was the trailer? Because they're like, new school mutants. They're the mutants, <laughs> but not what you're expecting. But they're not your dad's mutants. Like you're Pink not. Floyd. These aren't your dad's X-Men. We're playing Pink Floyd to show you that it's not like your dad. Yeah. <laughs> you hate Pink Floyd. Anyway, my I... name's Jackson McMurray. My name's Adeline McMurray. My name is Keita Rhodes. My name is Satchel Hartmanso. Hello, and we're here with the podcast that's called No Nerds Allowed. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Howdy, and howdy, howdy. Good Unless good you're good. a nerd, then get out. <clears throat> of course, of course. Mm. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you all signed the contract when you walked in, and we all know. <laughs> so I <laughs> have a done a pretty exhaustive amount of research about this movie in the last 24 yeah. hours. Uh, the Gosh. movie being New Mutants, of course, for people who didn't read the title before clicking on this podcast or video. Yeah, you know, you know, you know. Um, and I, I, I don't want to cut anybody off if anybody has any immediate thoughts, but I, I am perfectly prepared to just dive into a lot of backstory on this thing. Yeah, because there's so much. The production of this movie is just a shit show. <laughs> like, there's just, there's no other way. You can't get around it. Right. So... This is all coming from uh, a Vulture article that I was reading that was very good. I will find the author of it because I I didn't have it pulled up immediately. Hold on. Uh, A Vulture article uh, called What Happened to the New Mutants by Chris Lee. Um, And basically, I was really surprised by a lot of what I saw in this because this movie is famously... It was delayed, like, a million times. It was originally supposed to come out in, like, February of 2018. And it didn't come out until, like, a few months ago in the middle of a pandemic. Um, (laughs) And basically, what... the A lot of people have been saying since the beginning that it's like, oh, this movie had extensive reshoots. But that is apparently not even a little bit true. Uh, Apparently... This was a very troubled production, but it was troubled in the sense that they didn't do any reshoots at all. And Mm. the long, tortured post-production on this movie, all they were only working with the footage they caught the very first time. They didn't do any reshoots at all, which is arguably even more problematic than (laughs) doing a million dollars worth of reshoots. Yeah, what the hell? Um... Because the the real thing that, like, the most troubling part, the most troubled part of this production was the writing. 
They spent mm-hmm. like two years working on this screenplay. And the director, Josh Boone, who is the head writer, um, was just really stubborn and wrote the weirdest fucking movie ever, apparently. And Fox was constantly like, we like the spirit of this thing, but we you gotta meet us halfway on some of this stuff. So basically, yeah. they went back and forth on like a million drafts where they would take a Josh Boone script, they'd give it to somebody else, they'd touch it up, fix it themselves, they'd give it back to Josh Boone, he'd say, no, fuck that, fuck that, fuck that, fuck that, this is kind of good though. And then they'd take that version, and they'd give it to somebody else, and they'd fix it, and then they'd give it back to Josh Boone, and he'd say, no, I don't like this, yeah, that's fine. And they did that back and forth like eight times. Um, Jesus Christ. Apparently, is this like. The first draft of the Avengers that was super. Or no, the first draft of Spider Man that was really fucking weird. Is it like that? Is it that? Are those the vibes? What this Vulture article says is that a lot. It was a lot more based around them being mean to each other, which is funny because they're already very mean to each other There's in the final no, well, it's, Yeah, Ileana is just a racist and a bitch the whole time. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. She's just a big, giant racist. Let me uh let me let me read uh my notes uh okay, real sure. quick on on Ileana. Um number 1, uh she's mean, I'm going to like her. Two, <laughs> never mind, she's racist. Uh two, <laughs> what the fuck can she do everything? Yeah. <laughs> right. no, okay, here's the thing about Ileana is that I know that she is based on a chaotic, chaotic character and they keep trying to like sit her up oh like oh she's the crazy one. But she's not crazy. She's just the most inconsistent character. Yeah. But it feels, like, unintentionally inconsistent. Like, just with mm. every single yeah. aspect of her character. Like, yeah. she's either insane, or she's totally normal, or she's the mean queen bee, or she's all alone and she's a freak, or she's a racist, or she's not a racist. Mm. Like, they just... It doesn't make any sense. Right. She's either super attached to Lockhead, where he's, like, on her hand all the time, or he's just, like, nowhere to be seen, and she doesn't care. Like, right. it's just every aspect of her character is inconsistent. Um, and her motiv- her motivation is, I want to get out, but really doesn't do anything to get out besides be a little, little stinker sometimes except spray paint like, like a oh, brownie and, face on a wall yeah, or something being a stinker. she's and, mean to the other kids except for she almost kills someone and then right. they both get punished but whatever but really she's like i'm gonna get out of here someday this is a cage and that's the theme of this movie is cages right. but we're not gonna do anything to leave um, anyway i'm a racist so, so yeah. anyway, i'm a racist so this movie already was delayed by like a year and a half even before coronavirus just because of its own production reasons but they were they were aware enough to realize that they couldn't really do reshoots uh without sort of with any sort of space between them because all of the actors are very young and you'd be able to tell the difference because they would have aged a year um, yeah and so like they didn't do that even though I swear, I swear I can tell the the main Native American girl, uh, Danny, I swear yeah. she looks older and younger in some different scenes. Maybe oh, absolutely. It was, maybe it was just a long shoot. Maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe it just well, looks weird. Well, she totally jumps in between looking like she's 13 and looking like she's 18. Like, she just wildly jumps in between. Like, that first scene where they're running away, she looks like a 13-year-old. And then by the end of the movie, she looks like she's 18. I don't right. know what's up. But anyway, apparently all of this delay, all of this post-production trouble is literally just people at Fox fucking tearing their hair out, trying to, like, wrestle this thing into some form they want to put out into the world with only the finite footage they already have and nothing else. Yeah. Which sounds absolutely hellish to me. Um, yeah. And... On top of that, right as they were getting ready to put it out, uh, this is a weirdly sort of mean, nasty movie in a lot of ways. And when Disney bought Fox a couple of months away from them being about to put out this movie, Disney took it and they were like, we gotta make this more like what we want to be doing. Um, Yeah. So, so... Basically, on top of the, like, year and a half of wrestling with the footage that Fox was already doing, Disney took it and did another year of it 
trying to make it something slightly different than what it was before. So yeah. this movie has just been like poked and prodded and manipulated and manhandled in so many I can only imagine like so many different forms. Like I it's it sounds absolutely just nightmarish to be a part of. Yeah. And what's what the weirdest thing about it is that you can definitely tell just in the way that like everybody the like in the flow of the movie, you can tell it's been poked and prodded and like things have been rearranged. Because like the pacing of this movie is very fast, but also mm-hmm. nothing happens in this movie. Mm-hmm. Which it, yeah. it's a weird it's a weird feeling like going through the plot of this movie because like like things just happen like the plot is we want to get out and then things happen and then we get out like that's what that's right. what the movie is but it's weirdly each of the characters do get established pretty well and I feel like I know all of the characters pretty well by the end of the movie which is weird because it's it's really hard to do, especially when you have, like, a group of people. There's only right. like, three people who we just, like, never get to know. But, like, I feel like I knew every character in the main ensemble, which is, like, difficult to do. I don't know how they did it so effectively somehow. Right. And, like, and if you compare it to something like Suicide Squad, where, like, mm-hmm. Suicide Squad is, like, dealing in a lot of the same waters, sort of, where they're, like oh, there are all these people, but they're dangerous, but they're trying to do whatever, and it's, like, this rogues gallery of, like, people who are, like, I don't know, are they really good? They're not doing anything. But it's, like, yeah. all these people that are just, like, oh, I killed my dad with fire on accident. And you're, like, yeah. okay, sure, fine, whatever. Um, And, like, yeah, it's just the difference in the writing between Suicide Squad, where you don't give a fuck about any of them, really. Yeah. And this, where you're like, you kind of figure them out. Like, you kind of figure out what their deal is throughout the course of the mm-hmm. movie. Which I think is is tricky to pull off. I, I We were talking about this a little but, bit before we went on the air. Um, it, with, most of us like this movie more than we don't like it. Which I think we were yeah. all kind of surprised by. Um, yeah, no. I'm yeah. talking this movie. I like the characters. I really like the horror elements in a superhero movie. I think that, like, I, it's got the suicide syndrome where the, where the poster is super, super colorful, and then the movie itself is kind of a very mute color palette, but, like, I still, right. like, I like the aesthetic, I think it was a fun time, but is it, is it a great movie? Is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, like, what you were saying earlier about the sort of, um, you know, the character's you know, are more likable, um, and you sort of, and you understand where they're coming from and stuff like that, um, I, I feel like it almost lends, uh, you know, again, I did like the movie, and here's a list of all the things we hate about this movie, and none of the <laughs> right, good things, right. yep, yep, yep. um, uh, but, like, it almost, if that, that's almost where it sort of feels incomplete, um, or sort of jumbled up, is that, like, is that it's it's almost a movie about these people like just dis- like discovering how like needing to fight and use their powers, and it's almost like a movie about like their their plan to escape, and it's almost a movie about just them, just you know like you know sort of like bonding, and you could see their sort of interactions, um, right. and it it like it feels like nothing happens because like none of these they don't they don't go together all the time very well i don't know that's just no. that's kind of how like i mm-hmm. felt about it is like by the end of it you're like you know i either like i either want to see you know like how they've grown or i want to see like you know them do actual like more cool stuff with their powers and stuff and you know neither one of those sort of um cathartic endings is really met um except with uh you know danny discover like finally figures this out figures it out she, how dragon. to train your dragons the big bear <laughs> right. yeah 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 it's, it's fucking like there are two wolves inside of you one is addicted to crack <laughs> there's addicted to crack you're yeah. addicted to crack. <laughs> it's so funny i was gonna say and the one i see the most is there are two wolves inside of you one is gay the other is gay you are gay you are, yeah and then, <laughs> and then in the movie she's gay <laughs> and i was like yeah, oh, so. yeah. <laughs> oh there it is <laughs> so, so you are gay yeah which is gay it, it's you yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one you feed, which is you. <laughs> which is you. 
<laughs> yeah, anyway, the point is, is that the movie opens with there are two wolves inside of you. One of them Can is we... the force of good, the other is the force of evil, and which one wins? Whichever one you feed. Like, they use that in the movie. Yeah, but, but they obviously it's been memed so much, you can't just take that at face value. Yeah, but they say yeah. bears instead of wolves, right, which just right. immediately took me out of it, because it's like, you can't pretend that that's not the saying. I and also, I hate all movies ever. Can we stop opening movies with, like, phrases like that? <laughs> we just stop. Because it never, I always hate it. It's never good. I, well, I, I just, I like, think it, oh, I think sorry, it points sorry. further to, like, how this movie doesn't know exactly what its main central theme thesis is. Is it that, like, fear can be overcome and love is greater than fear? Is it we should be working together as a team? Um, is it you need, we shouldn't be living in a cage? What Like, we deserve freedom? Like, what is this movie trying to say to the world and how is it being portrayed through the characters i don't really know yeah. i mm -hmm. like they want it to be an ensemble movie but there's never really any earned time where at first they don't get along but now they do get along like avengers does that mm -hmm. so well in mm -hmm. this movie they p play with a like a what a, a polygraph machine for a little bit <laughs> right, and, which I think and now we're all that. buddies it's fun. Yeah, and now, and now like, we've forgotten the racism bit. <laughs> right. Yeah, but yeah. After, the, after that scene was over, I didn't feel like, oh, they've learned things about each other and they respect each other now. I thought, well, that was a scene and we learned some backstory. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they're friends still. Uh, right. Yeah. And it's, well, it's a weird like, thing because, like, the, the interactions between all of them never feels like they actually make any real progress in a satisfying way, like, as they're talking to each other, you know? But mm -hmm. at the same time, about halfway through the movie, they're just like, it's cool, though. They're friends now. And their chemistry yeah, yeah. is, like, really good after that. So you're just like, I mean, okay, sure, fine. <laughs> like, Yeah, they're friends yeah. now, whatever. <laughs> you're just kind of willing to, like, let it go because, like, the dialogue is nice. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this movie is weird because they, they, like, establish, like, they do the teen high school movie thing where they're like, these are the mean ones, and these are the nice ones, and then right. we just go off of that. There's parts of this movie that are just so fucking high school, and I hate it so much. Like, the opening for, uh, what's his name? Roberto, where he's like, what's wrong with you, drugs, nympho, hopefully, <laughs> and he, like, pops right. his collar or whatever. One, it's the one. worst <laughs> thing in the world, and I hate it. I think and I then, think, like, I, I or think like, that's on purpose, honestly. Or like when they drug the teacher and then they party and the two girls that's... are just in the hallway dancing with tambourines <laughs> that and that's so like good. it. Yeah, that's that's the whole scene. That's that that's so... some footloose ass shit. Like, yeah, yeah I definitely. That was... But the, yeah, I think like the it's the Breakfast Club. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bre yeah, Breakfast. Thank you. Much better analogy. Um. um yeah, that but, seems really, but, really good, where they're like, oh, they're partying and having fun, and the two pieces of footage they use are, like, the two of them throwing, f like, them hanging out in a room, like, throwing cereal at each other, intercut with the two girls just in a hallway in one static shot who both have tambourines, just, like, and They're just, like, jumping around. around. Yeah. Yeah. It's so now, funny. It's really good. Now that you've given me, like, the background that they had, like, one shot at this or whatever right yeah it um, makes so much more sense yeah that it's like oh they probably only had those two scenes <laughs> yeah <laughs> like whatever else they had was just a completely unusable right because that's the thing about making movies right is like you basically it's very very rare for productions to like totally nail it and like get everything they need the first time you know mm -hmm. usually mm -hmm. you do your whatever four months of principal photography you start working on the edit for a month or two. You put it together. You figure out, like, this doesn't work. We forgot to get this. Like, we This need... shot's blurry. Exactly. We don't have audio. All mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. That's when you go in for reshoots. Like, everybody does it. It's totally normal. Doing reshoots is standard practice for exactly that reason. Yeah. And... But now there's, like, this weird stigma that, oh, no, they went in for reshoots. The movie's going to be bad. Right. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. But, like, this is... Like, exactly what happened. Like, that kind of scene from someone who's been through film school is, like, that moment where you're like, fuck. Like, <laughs> we shot yeah. this, and we thought it was going to turn out one way, but then we realized we just super don't have enough footage to make that work. And you're like, I don't know, do I keep this weird shot where they're just dancing with tambourines, or do I just cut the whole scene? It 
is kind of important yeah. for the movie to make sense. So I guess, I guess we just have to stick with the tambourines. You yeah, know? I guess we keep it like sort of. <laughs> and the yeah. movie is short. Like it's it's yeah, an it's hour and a half short. long. Like it could have. I don't know. I just felt like there needed to be a little bit more. Like. Yeah. A little bit more finding out the actual backstory instead of just like, oh, I oh, killed my yeah. girlfriend because I'm too hot. <laughs> Get it? Right. Because I'm attractive. Or mm-hmm. I don't like more training scenes. Like there are a few of them, like they're breathing exercises, but you don't see them using their powers at all, which I get right. is like they've set up mm-hmm. this mystery, like, ooh, what's everyone's powers? But like, then I stopped caring because I figured out their powers by just looking it up. Right. Yeah. And yeah. if, and if also, you also but, like, like, oh, oh. No, sorry, continue. <laughs> I, was just, <laughs> I was gonna say, I just say, which is a bad way to set up your like. They did this for um, Captain Marvel too, where if you already are familiar with the comics, then like this huge mystery that they're spinning isn't a mystery to you at all. You're like, right. yeah, Danny has ghost powers. It's her, duh. <laughs> well, that's Get the thing. It. Okay, so this is something else I want to talk about because this is one of the few comic book movies over the last few years that's like really explicitly based on like a particular set of comic books. Um, because a lot of the time, these kinds of movies, you know, they take bits and pieces from different things and broad ideas, but they're like making up their own story for the most part. Yeah. Um, yeah. The comic book this is based on, I think, is so fascinating. Uh, because New Mutants in 1983, this is like pre-Dark Knight Returns, pre-comic books being cool or interesting, basically, at all. Um, uh, Chris Claremont and Bill Sankovitz uh, are, write this weird, surreal, freaky-ass story about, like, it's, you know, it's a little bit different in that comic book. What happens there is, like, uh, Danny gets attacked by the bear And then she's in the hospital, like, undergoing surgery. And while she's in there, the bear is, like, trying to get at her. So all the other new mutants go out and, like, fight the bear while she's, like, undergoing surgery at the same time. Um, And that's, you know, the long and short of it. But when they go out and start fighting this bear, it's all this, like, weird, surreal, supernatural stuff. And the art style Mm. is, like, this totally, like... It's not always watercolor, but it's sometimes watercolor, like mixed media with like pen strokes and like mm-hmm. this nope. super avant-garde, super weird stuff for a superhero comic book in 1983 that just totally blew up. I have saved, uh, I was reading it earlier today, just a handful of like my favorite panels from it because it's super like kind of abstract and freaky. Um <laughs> Yeah, it sounds really the, cool. In the chat. Uh, uh, when you when you mentioned that, like, it started out as this cool thing, um, it definitely, like, I, I mentioned in the chat, I was like, this makes the movie much less good. Um, yeah, well, it's, looking at the movie, like I said, it's very muted. I would say that it, that it takes on the spirit of this comic book and also doesn't, because I think this comic book coming at comic books in a new way by coming at it with like this cool avant-garde art style. And so for the movie to come at super ha- superhero movies with a horror aesthetic is something so different that we haven't seen before. Like, I mm. think that's cool and transformative and bringing something new to the table. Oh, but wow. also I think in bringing in the horror aesthetic, unless you're doing avant-garde horror or something really creative with horror, you kind of, can sink back into a muted palette because it's a horror and it's scary and oh it's dark mm. like so i think yeah. in some ways it totally does embrace like bringing something new to the platform that they're using but also sacrifices some of it in order to do that you know right I especially just since there are so many fantastical set pieces like we're in the spirit realm what it, color is it snow Red. blue <laughs> we're in this creepy room with the smiley men what color is it dark red yeah <laughs> like it's oh. all it's all the same i just I I, by the way That's i just like... put up some comics on the on the yeah, stream really just cool slip shots some yeah. panels that i really like and it's so like i can't stress enough like how in 1983 everything basically looked like you know jack kirby and john romita senior you know, like, yeah. just normal, like, if you imagine what comic books looked like in the 60s and 70s, like, that's what comic books look like, uh, mm-hmm. for the most part. And, like, this is so, like, the way yeah. 
Bill Sankovich. This is like modern comics. Yeah, like draws. He's the same guy who drew Wilson Fisk as like the big, with like the giant shoulders that like tower over his head, like in Spider Verse. He does <laughs> like a lot of the same stuff with the bear in this, that it's just like this shape, this like dark shape that has like eyes and teeth and claws that sort of come out in different ways. Um, mm-hmm. That I think is like just. It's so, it's so cool and interesting to me. And this movie, and also something that's interesting is that, like, the whole, the bear is, like, a manifestation of Danny's powers is not in the original comic book. It is just a, like, weird, surreal demon monster in the comic book that they are fighting. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh. So it being, like, a manifestation of Danny's powers is a, uh, is totally this movie, which I think is- Are her powers not, like, like, greatest fear stuff? In the original comic? Uh, no, they are. Uh, okay. But it's more It's just not about... like... It's not represented by a giant spirit bear. Well, right, exactly. <laughs> there just is a real giant spirit bear coming to kill her in real life. Oh, cool, great. <laughs> yeah, they're, <laughs> they're not connected. You know. But, like, all of this stuff with, like, ooh, scary smiley men. Oh, you killed your dad in the mines. Scary priest with a, with who's gonna brand you. That fucking uh, that's party all city the Halloween costume priest. Is like I yeah. think this movie does a really good job of bringing in horror elements. With like I love the design of the bear where he's like smoky and like huge and his red eyes. Mm-hmm. I like the design mm-hmm. of it. I think the smiley face men are super cool. I do like their designs. I like the first time that you see them, it just looks like a disproportionate man, and you're like, ew, gross. And he turns around, yeah. and it's like, oh, it's a monster. Like I love that. I think that's super cool. Right. But that fucking party city. <laughs> Fuck priest is the worst thing in this whole yeah. movie. I hate him so much. <laughs> like weird I don't know. Face. So okay, I, 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 I think, think like it was fine. Doing... It's like, or okay. Go ahead, Sash. what's up? No, I was just saying. I think like, I think the, I I I think the priest like, I think a lot of them were kind of like cheesy. Like I think the spirit bear is the only one that's not like, because even the even the thing is like is like, it, you know the 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 smiley men are not. You know, they're you yeah, don't find a copy of them in the thing, but it's it's very like, you know, Slenderman like or there's a right. lot of yeah. horror movie stuff where it's just like unproportional things. Um so I think I I think it almost like I don't know, for me it was kind of it kind of made sense that like it kinda it kinda clicked in my mind that this that these were like, oh, these are supposed to be like representations of their fears. Um uh, or whatever, you know, they're these like are just exaggerated. like, yeah, that they are like these exaggerated, like very yeah. horror movie esque. But I would disagree because if that was the case, then I would want it to be like the nun from the nun, you know, <laughs> like there are ways to like show something and make it like and like hype it up so much so it's like obviously an exaggeration without having to be like a party city clown. Because like a uh, Kentucky boy, I forget what his name is. But, like, when he, like, Bam. has his horror thing and he's going, like, into the mine and, like, all the mm-hmm. people are turning around to, like, look at him in the mine is, first of all, super cool. I love that scene right. where yeah. you just, like, see the silhouettes of the people in the mine and they're, like, all two feet from each other with these pickaxes and, like, you can just see their silhouettes and, like, the light keeps turning towards the camera right. and, like, widening it out. It's super cool. Yeah, and then you work yeah. to the end of it. And you get to the dad, and he's hitting at the wall with the pickaxe, and, like, the wall is, like, bleeding, and it's mm-hmm. super cool. And then he turns around to his son, and he's like, what the fuck did you do? It's really good. Like, that kind of exaggeration. Like, that's obviously a horror movie exaggeration, where it's creepy, and it's weird, and it makes you uncomfortable, and it's obviously mm-hmm. heightened. And then for... Because I like rain's backstory i think it's a really cool backstory of like her being a religious person and like coming to the church for help and then having them basically beat her and brand her i think that's a cool story and i think it's a really impactful story yeah and so for the heightening of that especially with how cool religious imagery is and how much it's used in horror movies or stuff the fact that when they get to like do that and get to heighten it and get to do something cool with it it's just like this dude with a bloody face and a weird preacher's costume and they just like beats her up when she's in the shower like i don't know it's not it's not as cool or dramatic or heightened as anybody else's like horror stories are you know I, yeah um... I, okay i can definitely see that where like it's not they definitely could have done sort of cooler stuff with it um yeah but yeah so like... with with x-men 
you know, part of the DNA of just X-Band as an idea is that they, you know, sort of always end up functioning as stand-ins for some sort of oppressed group of people, you know? Yeah. And some people mm-hmm. like to take that more generally. Some people like to, like, apply it really specifically to certain things. And over the course of the decades that we've been telling X-Men stories, it's fascinating to look at, like, what sort of issues people want to sort of project onto, like, mutants in these stories. Um, Mm -hmm. One of my pet peeves with these X-Men movies is that, like, for X2, like, you know, credit where credit is due, Bryan Singer is is a serial child molester, but... One of his, like, big takes in X2, him being a gay man, was to play mutants like queer people. You know, there's that whole thing in X2 where it's, like, the you know, having to, like, come out as a mutant to your parents and your parents telling you, like, have you tried just not being not a mutant? Being a mutant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, like, that was, like, this groundbreaking thing that nobody was really doing at that point, and it's a super interesting way to look at it. But, like, ever since then, in these movies... <laughs> like so many of these X-Men movies have really ham fisted like queer allegories in them where it's like my dad was a priest and like using like religious like uh, Catholic Christian mm-hmm. imagery as like an oppressive force against mutants like it has been for queer people for so long and they all seem to think that they're really smart for thinking of it <laughs> you know yeah that's fair. and that's it's really like fair. we've done this exact thing so many times it just feels really stale to me because they do it in deadpool 2 with what's his name the new zealand kid um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they do it in this movie with wolfsbane and in um in uh logan right i don't know i can't remember anyway do they I don't remember. Uh, okay. but Probably. There's at least one other example that I can't think of off the top of my head. But, like, it's it's this thing that people like to use in a really ham-fisted way. Anyway. Yeah. So th- yeah. that annoys me. But the opposite side of this is that I think that this movie and this sort of general idea has a really apt um, comparison for, like, severe mental illness, right? Mm-hmm. Because the whole idea of like being a mutant and being chained up like this is because you don't want to hurt people around you or yourself. You're a danger to yourself and others, which is Mm -hmm. exactly what like people with severe mental illnesses have to deal with. It's not only just that, like, you know, you want to become a productive member of society, quote unquote, or whatever. It's about like safety for the people around you. And Mm -hmm. I feel like that is not a territory that has been, super often explored in x-men mutant stories and i think Mm -hmm. it's a really it's a really apt metaphor that i'm fascinated by and i'm i that's basically as far as i've gotten in thinking about it like as far as what this Mm -hmm. movie specifically actually has to say um because the reality is, is that, like, the treatments they get and all that kind of stuff doesn't have any real correlation to the way that people are treated in real life in the 21st century, no. you know? And I do think it is because they're not... This movie does not take place in society. It takes place when they're all locked up and they're all by themselves. And, like, we don't get that commentary right. of how they're treated because we're not really looking at that. We're looking at them, like in this place that they are, you know? And I do think that comparison to mental illness, what I really like about this movie as a quote-unquote horror movie, because I think, I I don't call it a horror movie, I guess maybe it just is, but, like, it definitely is a spooky movie trying to do horror elements. I don't know if I would say it's a horror movie. It's a superhero movie, but it's, like, a horror super movie, superhero movie, you know? Super horror movie. A super horror movie. But what I like with them taking the horror take on superhero things is that they could then just they then open themselves up to fall into all of the pitfalls of horror you know with Mm. killing any lgbt characters or treating people with mental problems horribly and they're always the villain so what i really Mm. like about this movie is that it totally embraces these horror elements and kind of horror tropes of like religion and like the slender man and stuff like that while having people of color in the cast that don't die and having LGBT rep that don't die and having the Mm -hmm. people that have quote unquote have the allegory for mental illness or whatever, be the heroes instead of being the villains, you know, like I like how it 
it uh, takes we... on horror without doing any of the things that make horror not fun or go against the plot of X-Men or anything cool that we're trying to do, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I forgot. Do we care about spoilers? No. No, we, you're we, good. Don't, we don't really do that. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> we don't do that uh, here. Because, like, um, yeah, because, like, the only person who, one, is the villain and also dies is, like, the only person um, that's, like, you know, like, stated to be, like, you know, sort of neurotypical and, like, sane and, like, in control of their powers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and is, you know, the, potentially the only per like, the, you know, would, I guess, in, in sort of, like, conjunction with the, uh, um, with X-Men often just sort of being an allegory is, you know, the villain is actually the oppressor you know, in this case. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so, I don't know. Like, yeah, I guess it, it does kind of take uh, uh, those those tropes and, you know, flip it around. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And, and I, the, weird, oh. the weird thing about it, thinking like that, is that, because at first they tell them, like, oh, hey, you're being prepped to, like, be in the X-Men. Like, Professor Xavier has his eye on you, but you guys are still dangerous, and we need to teach you how to control yourselves, and then after that, you can be an X-Man. Which I really liked, and I was reading as, like, oh, this is, you know, sort of like a one-to-one to, like, you know, sort of mental institutions today who are, like, trying to, like, prep you to, like, go out into society afterwards, Mm -hmm. you know? But Mm -hmm. then there's, like, a weird twist where they're, like, actually, I'm a from a private organization that wants to turn you into super soldiers or whatever. And then it's like, mm. I, I don't know what that really means. If I'm thinking about this in a broader sense, like uh, that's not I really guess happening to people. It doesn't fit into the allegory. Yeah. Or it might, yeah. I don't know. But like, for me, like I thought it was kind of a cool, I don't know. It was like, I didn't expect the sort of, I knew something was like, you know, something was definitely bad about the place. Like nobody right. was, you know, Nobody was getting cared for, and, like, um, they're definitely, uh, but I thought it was really cool to reveal that, like, oh, we're not training you to be superheroes, we're training you to be super villains. Um, <laughs> right. And mm-hmm. It's that, like, all of them have these, like, terrifying powers, and they, they you know, it all, like, killed people. And so they probably just looked at that and were like, were like, huh, you know, like, it, none, none of them have, you know, it's not like, oh, this person flies, or, you know, this person is super strong. It's like, this person turns into a terrifying version of the sun. This person (laughs) creates the, the, like, worst nightmares, you know? Like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. this person has a hell dimension they could just go to. Right. Um, So it's like, it is like, oh, duh, that makes sense. I'm an idiot. Like, of course, like, they're they're not going to be... You know, they're not going to be, like, recruiting these for the hero program with the, you know, the person with, uh, you know, cool laser beam vision. <laughs> right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, um, there's just so much telling and not showing, though. Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah, that's true. Definitely I, true. I don't know. There's just so much, like, oh, Roberto's scared of using his powers. But we're not going to tell you what his powers are. Why? I don't know. And she's there to train them to use their powers safely, but we never see that happen. So yeah, here's, here's a question does, I have. Though. If if Robert if we are to believe that Roberto literally explodes every time he has an orgasm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, why uh-huh. why is he so horny all the time? Like, wouldn't you... Because he can't have an old <laughs> oh, Jackson! If you... But I, my argument is not that if he <clears throat> never has sex, why is he horny? Because that makes sense. I mean, if you... Yeah, never why is he, like, always life, bragging about it? If you've never in your life had an orgasm without causing tremendous damage to the world around yeah. you... Yeah. Don't you think you would just kind of stop being into that whole... Yeah, like Part rogue. Yourself, you know, that's literally just rogue. <laughs> that's what happens yeah, to rogue. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. I, that would just that would be a God, very a much more that's interesting good. exploration of character. That there's this very attractive young man, and they're in their little thing, and they're like, "Truth or dare? Truth or dare, Roberto? Uh, how many people have you had sex with?" And he's like, zero. I don't want to have sex with anyone." And then instead of him like lusting after 
Ilya, Ilya, Ilyana, what's her name? Ilya. Yeah, Ilyana. Anya Taylor Joy. Right. Yeah, like, rah, rah, she's like, mm, I'm in. I'm into that. I'm into that guy. And he's like, No, I can't. And then when he has that dream, it makes a lot more sense that he's like, Oh, I'm. I'm gonna let myself go Hulk right. style. And I exploded you by accident. My bad. Yeah. Right. Although I do that's think that's also what happens to the Hulk when he. Gets I was gonna say. Which is, yeah. I think, also yeah, I, is there's a not a cast. lot. That's, I'm always horny. <laughs> right. There's not a lot that's good about the Ed Norton Hulk movie, but the moment where he's like, "No, I definitely can't," because I will turn into the Hulk is like just a cool idea mm-hmm. to think about. Is it cool? It's good. Uh, well, yeah, I, like I really, that. I love the, I love his heart rate monitor. I think that's so cool when he's yeah. like running through Brazil. Right. Um, but anyway, which is where I, Roberto's from. I was also gonna say yeah. I thought that what they were doing was like they were gonna have sex in the pool, and because he's underwater, he has like a cooling system. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, it would be fine. That would be pretty mm-hmm. sick. I thought that's what they were gonna do, and I was gonna be really into oh it. But then they were just like, got him like a water cooling system, like a computer. That's yeah, exactly. Out too much. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but then the water would get out anyway. Uh, and, 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 but then it, it turns out like, they don't even did. that Ilya doesn't even want to have sex with him. She was just like trying to make him explode. So whatever. No, 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 fine. Jackson. That, that was a part up. of the nightmare because he is a drunk. Yeah, that was, remember it wasn't she, Ilya. She ran in. Oh, her no, hair no. was dry, and it was like, oh my god, it was a nightmare. No, no, no. That I was thought, the greatest fear. I, no, she just went back to her hell dimension, right? No, I it was wasn't. Like a, no, no, I no, 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 no. I think it was all a hallucination because then they were like, "You were in the pool alone by yourself the whole time." Oh, yeah. I guess Remember. the way I read it was that because we've seen that she can teleport before. I thought, yeah, she... no, don't get me wrong, it was sloppily done, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right, I thought she just teleported back to her room in order to like free no, them. No. Yeah, she's no. like, bitch. Also, yeah, she she's not the bad guy. I kind of figured that like she could also dry her hair. Um, yeah. Like I don't, I don't think like you develop the power to like go to limbo freely and summon a dragon and not be able to like do practical yeah. small things with it. Well, just like so, if you walk through hell, all the water is pretty high. Probably yeah, gonna yeah, go. No, so I think the intention was that like his greatest fear is becoming intimate with someone and killing them by right. accident. Yeah, yeah, and he's, and right. he's yeah. who he wanted to be intimate with, so that's what she was in dream. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Now that you say that, I that makes think... a lot more sense. It does make yeah. a lot of sense. <laughs> I do think, with the short amount of time that this movie has, I think they do a great job getting into the characters, telling us about the characters, getting to know the characters, getting to know their backstories, and then we completely forget to have a plot outside of that. Mm-hmm. Because the whole mm. twist with the, oh, it's actually the bad guys, it's just, like, kind of, like... Like, wow, okay, surprise! So what? Uh, like, you know, like, I kind of I didn't like that twist. I don't think it was a twist that we needed to ha- have. I think, I think like, oh, our greatest horrors are coming to life and we're in a place we don't want to be is enough of a conflict that we don't need... Uh, What's her face, mom, to actually be a villain? You know, <laughs> she can be in the yeah, wrong. Yeah, actually, she can I be in the wrong, good. but not be like the super villain who wants to make them into super bad guys. I kind right. of wanted her to just be a yeah. student of Xavier that was just like going about doing this the wrong way, and that yeah. was going to be the conflict. That like she yeah. is trying mm-hmm. to do the right thing, but she's doing it the wrong way. She's not actually helping these kids. And then they were yeah. all going to come together as a family to defeat the bear. But no, they were just like, no, she's a bad guy, and actually, uh, super soldiers or whatever. And like, right. I don't know, I didn't like it at all. Have you even, Have you guys like, seen they... Come Play? Oh. oh no, I was gonna say like, even if like they did do like the oh, they're all supposed to be super villains, um, then I think it they could have like kept that and not had like the whole we need, I am a vet and I need to put this person down like a dog or, a, right, you know, yeah. a bear. To Shifting character for her. Like, she's um, always been, like, cold but caring, and now she's like, well, I'm gonna kill you now, and it's like, well, yeah, like it's, she's a, it's she's probably a better if you die. Um, I think, and, like, if she hadn't done that, then I think that she could have been, like, a pseudo-villain, um, uh, but still had the sort of dramatic yeah. tension of, huh, all our greatest fears are coming to life. Maybe that's going to be a problem. Yeah, maybe um, that's enough of a problem. Yeah. Yeah, instead of, like, 
I'm actually a bad guy, and I'm training you to be villains, even though we haven't seen anything such training. I'm over that, though. And then I immediately (laughs) die and get eaten by a bear, because we all know that the bear is the greater issue. The movie knows it, too, so they just kill her immediately. But it's like, oh, shit, Uh, uh, bring a new one. But if we're gonna roll with this, like it's a, it makes it's a lot cooler for her to be someone who's framing these new mutants in the fa- mindset that they should be neurotypical and they need to blend in and they can't be dangerous and they can't be obvious and the way that they are isn't good because look at how many people they've hurt right. and we need to change you and fix you and if the lesson is I don't need to be caged I'm fine the way I am. Um, because I'm great and special or whatever the, the lesson is. Sure. Like, that would be a lot better, but I guess you don't get yeah. to kill a woman with a spirit bear. Yeah, well, but she's not, yeah. in, in this metaphor, she's not near typical either. I would I would use her as the person but who, she's like, blended, who has... But she's blended in. Yeah, who she's has like, chosen I figured it out. to blend in. But that goes back she's to my thing has her... a... But that goes back to my thing of her realizing that she's doing it the wrong way. Because this is the way that she did it. She blended in. She, to- like, kept mm-hmm. her powers yeah. down. She only uses her powers, like, once the whole movie. So for them to just be like, hey, you're one of us. You shouldn't have to, like, just, like, you were wrong. And you yeah, hurt, go you're ahead hurting and yourself stand, and you're hurting others and mm-hmm. doing it this way. It's like, I still like that way more than, like, hey, you're the bad guy and you're dead now. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to crush you with my force field. With my, yeah. with my dragon right. hair. By the Which... way, right at the end of the movie, there's this moment that I think is super cool where she gets eaten by the bear and they're all in the force fields. And then there's a specific moment where there's, like, a loud crunch coming from the bear's mouth that is, like, the same <laughs> instant when the force fields dissipate. I think that's yeah. so sick. Just, like, a little yeah. moment I thought was awesome. Yeah, I did like that, that they, like, they're like, oh, you know, she's clearly in a lot, oh, and now is the point in which she is dead. Like, yeah. no yeah, doubt exactly. at that point we've heard her bones disintegrate. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's been Darth Mauled cut in two, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's been Darth Mauled. <laughs> oh, man. I But also, no okay, force field crushing scene, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know this is like Cinema Sins ass bullshit. Right. Why the fuck didn't this the um Why didn't she teleport out of Why did she teleport? Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, there's also a problem because Ileana seemingly just chooses to not have powers a lot of times in this movie. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. like the nurse is like manhandling her and like throwing her in a room. She's like, No, stop and you're like, Don't you have magic sword powers that you've used? in the exact same circumstances earlier like what's yeah. the, what's the problem <laughs> you know right they, they like, didn't like, have I, any I reason to just say than this person they, that would have been a great reshoot to say oh and when we throw you into this room it's a power dampener yeah or something like there's that. lead yeah. in the walls or some something like that yeah some that's say, superman like, but or, like <laughs> like i was talking about with my mom about this um because i'm back home for thanksgiving is that like um so like, well, why you know like e- even if like if she couldn't let's say that she can't teleport out of the thing because like she's needing to escape and there's the barrier around it and clearly if she could teleport out of like the big barrier then she wouldn't have done would have done so already right they mm-hmm. could have just like said that at at like any point being like oh I can't escape because her barriers prevent other powers from being used through it or something like that yeah just like a throwaway mm-hmm. line. Like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, like, then I'll be like, oh, I understand why this is a helpless situation and why, you know, she can't just, like, at least teleport somewhere else. You right, know? yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, if there was some, like, particular reason why she has the upper hand, like, she has the physical power over them at all times, which yeah. would it would be so easy to do. Like, she's got the force field. She can use them. She can corral them around, put them in rooms and stuff. Or like mm-hmm. a Thor Ragnarok. Ooh, they've got a little shocker on their necks. Right, yeah. yeah. Or inside right. of, in their wrists, you can't see them, so it doesn't matter if we didn't reshoot anything. <laughs> right, <Yeah>. right. <laughs> it's like a very like heavily edited line from like a new act, like voice actors that will <laughs> yeah. be just like, oh, and our uh, new um, uh, pl- chips that we we have, we keep in our arms now. Yeah, so we get shocked if we try to leave. Hallway. Yeah, and it's a shame we have all these microchips. microchips. It's just nanomachines. Yeah, it's just nanomachines. It's a near enough <laughs> processor, a learning computer. <laughs> I also think it's really interesting. This is this is my fourth and final big picture 
long thing I want to say about Hot this take. movie. Because yeah, yeah, there's yeah. just a lot in this whole thing. There's a lot. That, like, for so long, people have been critical of the, like, Brian Singer X-Men franchise. Of being, like, so sort of down-to-earth and muted, you know? Like, mm-hmm. all the X-Men movies, you know, they're, like, political thrillers. They're, like, you know, leather costumes and, like, blue, gray, mm-hmm. steely lighting, you know? And they're and, like, ugh, not that spandex. Yeah. It'd be when, you know, X-Men comic books famously are, like, big and bright and colorful and aliens and magic and all sorts of crazy shit. Right, right. Uh, and it's because we're all, like, you know, parroting the tone of the thing that came before, which all started with Brian Singer's blue gray ass x-men movie um Mm -hmm. which is you know not a take that i don't like but it just becomes frustrating when you've got this huge thing and it all stems from one particular very specific take you know um Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's interesting that like the last the (laughs) the final two x-men movies were both doing a lot of legwork in trying to open it up into weirder stuff you know like dark phoenix was like they're gonna go to space there's gonna be aliens and then this one's like, there's magic and crazy supernatural shit, and they finally got Lockheed in there. And, like, both of those movies just, like, do it in a kind of boring way. <laughs> like, yeah. they're not, they're still not all the way there of just letting themselves go crazy. They're still, like, having to, like, rein it in a lot to make sure it all kind of tonally meshes with fucking X-Men 1, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did like that, um, I, I like that this one, I, I don't know, because... The, uh, they say that um i've heard a lot of people say that like oh umbrella academy is the x-men for depressed people <laughs> and watching this i was like oh this is now x-men for depressed people <laughs> you know <laughs> like yeah the i mean logan was like a fucking you know like just nightmare if, like having a bad day you know right. um, yeah. but like i like that this was um because i i don't know part of it is that i what i think that the um what i think x-men does the best uh is like the fact that people have superpowers that are just super shitty you know (laughs) right like if you figure that if there's if you have this universe where random people just you know get superpowers um i don't and there are a lot of series that do this i think x-men is one of the only few and like almost regrettably jojo also does this um <laughs> where like some of them just suck right. like you know like the uh sam you know he, he's super powerful clearly or he, he can be probably right. um that's gotta fucking hurt every single time <laughs> right he's always got like a cast on his arms he was kind of beat yeah. up and tired right. yeah. and and of, of like rogue is the classic example of this right. because she has the power of everyone i know dies right. um so you know and i can never love anyone um which is fun and cool but like yeah a lot of a lot of the people just like it's just like hey i have these superpowers um and my power is to you know my power is to make everyone around me worse you know mm-hmm. there's a I really there was like an X-Men about this movie oh. mini series a few years ago that was like a goofy story but it was all about this kid who like learns he's a mutant and he doesn't know what his power is, and he goes to Xavier's Academy, and he, like, sits down across the table from Beast, and they're like, he's like, well, we did a bunch of tests on you, and we found out that um, your power is that you can you can explode. And he's like, oh, I have, like, cool explosion powers? He's like, no. Oh, no. You can explode. You can blow yourself up and die. <laughs> and he's like, oh, cool. Oh. What are the, well, what are the um, like, mutated, so like, gross guys called like the the morlocks or something like that do you remember i don't think i'm familiar with that okay because there's like there's this concept in in the x-men universe where like some mutants are just horribly ugly like toad kind of but like there's this one in x-men evolution which is the one when some of the x-men are in high school and some of them are their high school mentors (laughs) like rogue is in high school storm is a teacher um Th- there's this guy named spike and spike at first super normal he's like i can just sh- grow spikes and shoot them out of my body and then he grows permanent spikes forever and he goes and lives down under the sewer because he can't be in normal <laughs> everyday life situations right they should uh, I don't know. They need to pull more out of that 
That's what I yeah. think. That's what now I think. Now we're now like horrifying. Yeah, it's just like, it's like, hey, here's a story about what if you woke up one day um, and you can't live in society because you're <laughs> literally too ugly. Right. <laughs> Yeah, um, and you come up with school kids books. Like, also, really fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're having a great time, but it's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at it's my just notes. It's like, yeah. We, how, can we set aside some time for dunking on uh, Sam's cannonballs accent in this movie? His southern accent? Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, so uh, much, it's so much fun. Ileana. <laughs> Where it's like sometimes really like subtle and sometimes hilariously broad. Where he's like, Ileana! And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, I know, the first time he's like spoke. a normal southern, and sometimes it's like, I have to do this thing right now. Yeah. My, da- <laughs> my dad gave me this call. My oh my god wait 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 why was his token like they all had little tokens and his token was my dad gave me a piece of gold because we work <laughs> in the coal mine. Rock. like yeah. you guys keep talking about like the like they do show character but like that is such a lazy character development <laughs> like you have nothing no backstory beyond coal mines like, I, 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 I think that's i i I also want to push back against that and just say that that's the saddest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> is that everyone's like, oh, you know, my powers made me hurt those around me. Um, and, like, I don't know if I can love anyone because I'm scared. And he's like, yeah, tough shit. I grew up in a coal mine where my dad didn't like me very much. And then I killed him accidentally. And now the entire country wants me dead. You know? And all I got for it was <laughs> this rock. And he All I have to show for it is carbon. his piece of coal. <laughs> yeah, okay, Charlie Brown. <laughs> like, yeah, I got our, uh... What do you I guys think have... about... Go ahead, Evelyn. I had oh, this man. thought when they, when they, when Danny and Rain kiss, I had this thought that's like, we kind of, we kind of did Twilight. We kind of did it. <laughs> we did it in a weird way, but we did yeah. it, right? Yep. <laughs> oh, like, I guess, yeah, I guess they split up Taylor Lautner's character. Yeah, but like with when Danny has her hair like parted down the middle and she's like always wearing that sweatshirt, she gives me real Bella Swan vibes. Is it just me? Like she totally no, gives see, off that yeah, vibe. I didn't see that actually. And then and then Rain is like a wolf person. They kind of did Twilight. I think like, that the Rain the Rain Danny stuff is like the strongest part of this movie. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. They do a great job like, with the, it. The most like believable like chemistry because like you know, Brain literally like saves her from the edge, you know, and then they kind of yeah. are close to together because, you know, out of the outcasts, they seem the most sort of isolated from the rest of the people. Did you guys yeah. like that cool piece of foreshadowing where they're both sitting on the couch watching TV and on the TV is two women kissing? Yeah. 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 Oh my <laughs> god, Buffy the Vampire <laughs> And oh, one of what them it was? Witchy girl? Yeah, 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 it was, if it was Buffy the Vampire Slayer, <laughs> that's even worse. It's probably somebody kissing a female werewolf that they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a female witch. It's a okay. female witch, Jackson. All right, all right. Jackson. Wait, wait, it's the same thing because that's what she was branded. Yeah, it's so fucking exactly, stupid. exactly, oh, brother, exactly. Was it was lazy. I think it could be oh, either w one. For witch. <laughs> It was W for witch, because then the priest is like, you little witch, we're gonna that's brain fair. you. Like, that's not I, his voice. <laughs> I do think it's very funny that, that is like, is. one horrible thing that happened to her. Absolutely atrocious. Yes. Horrible. I think it would be much funnier if instead of, like, branding her a witch, they're just like, they had the W for werewolf, specifically. <laughs> right. Like, that was the werewolf yeah. brand. They're like, no, all thought, right, we prepared I for I thought this. it was for wolf. <laughs> Oh. No, it was for witch, more. which doesn't make sense because she's a wolf. But but you know, it's, the, it's it, you know they're going for that religious persecution vibe. Yeah, right? it's open for and sometimes you don't always land exactly where you meant to. But yeah. I think I don't know her relationship with like her religion is also really good. I think it's played mm-hmm. well. It feels realistic to me as someone who is religious. It didn't feel like. Oh, this is what I think religion is because I went to church one time and I don't know anything. <laughs> like it yeah. felt real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, there's it. definitely really more. It. There's, there's a lot of there's a lot of portrayals sometimes where it's like, um, 
where it's like, this is church girl. She's a normal church girl who likes the Bible and God. Um, and one day something bad happened or whatever. And like, she has to question it. It's like, this is like someone that mm -hmm. still believes um, in a very sort of like human way. Right. Um, yeah. You know, and that like, you know, she's just like, she is just like a, she feels like a like legitimate, like, you know, oh, I, you know, I still believe in God and I still follow the Bible. I just, you know, my trauma is with the treatment from this priest and this right. one church rather than, mm -hmm. you know, that the Catholic church was the problem mm -hmm. um, specifically, I guess. I don't know. I like that. Also, the part when she's like, bless me, Father, for I've sinned. I masturbated twice and called someone a mean name once or something like that. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then she's and no one's there, so she's like also ghosty ghost is coming and she's like, um, I'll say uh one, our father and two Hail Marys. Okay, bye. Yeah. yeah. Really I like that. <laughs> I really it's like so that. good. It's so funny. <laughs> uh what do you guys think of the smiley boys? Thumbs up, thumbs I down, like smiley em. boys. I like them. They're deal. cliche, don't get me wrong. They're super cliche, but I like them. I think they're creepy and I think they're cool, but like they never explain. Yeah, Ileana's you're just kind backstory. of to believe that Ileana was tortured by a sect of smiley-faced monsters at some point yeah. in her life. You're question like, mark. No, no, it's just no, it's because no, no. it's super unclear. Because obviously, all of these are like abstractions of their greatest fear, right? And so it's super I mean, unclear yeah. of like is the are the like what part of it is the abstraction and what part of it is the you know yeah, like. Yeah. Because we know everything else, like, we know what a mind looks like, so we understand when the mind <laughs> looks wrong, but we don't know yeah. at what point Ileana is the, you know, is, yeah. like, um, imagining beyond what actually happened. When I get, when you talked about how much they had to rewrite of, like, cat making the director, like, tone it down, I think that was probably one of the things that they had to tone down. Because for me, my interpretation was definitely that she was in some form of sex, sex trafficking as a child, some right. form of something like that. Mm -hmm. So these smiley men was just some form of, like, the people who would, like, treat her badly or something, or would be the men who were abusing her. So for them to yeah. just be, like, these faceless men made sense, because yeah. it wasn't a group of 15 people. It was just whatever man was there and was doing it. That's right. how I mm -hmm. interpreted it. Yeah, but Disney isn't going to Here's my interpretation. Say I know, think so. I feel like we had to kind of like dance around it a little bit. My interpretation is Ileana is actually um, she's from Chernobyl, <laughs> and the the men who kidnapped her are all are all uh, horribly mutated from the explosion that and the sense. radiation poisoning. Cool, cool. So that's what they look like. They kidnapped mm -hmm. her. They're like, "Hey, you little mutant girl, we're gonna give you this uh, puppet. That's a pterodactyl. We're gonna have a good time, and we're horribly mutated. And this is canon because there are mutants all around <laughs> us, cool. and we don't know where all of their mutations oh, come from." There's it's one line in all movie. Apparently... It's not supposed to be funny, but it fucking killed me. Where, uh, wait, I, God, I don't even remember who said it. It was. I think it was uh, Danny talking to Rain, and she was just like, you know, I don't think this I don't is like a real... Sand. No, she goes, I don't think no. this is a real hospital. And I was yeah. Like, yeah, obviously it's not a real hospital. Clearly <laughs> not. I, I just no, 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 yeah, there's, there's, one, there's one doctor, and you have no treatment. <laughs> yeah, your treatment uh, is breathing in a circle once a week. Oh, I okay. So I'm reading. I'm reading the comments, or I'm reading the uh, chat right chat, now. Right. Apparently, yeah. uh, Lane says that her actual backstory is that she's just actually just tortured by demons, like real, like well, real. But I think if that's demons. what they were going for, they would have just said that. They you know, I think it, we're going yeah. for a new interpretation, especially okay. with the way that we've interpreted the other characters. I definitely feel that that's not what they're going for in this movie. It yeah, and I also don't even okay. think that, that that's it, because there's not any sort of aesthetic continuity between, like, the hell dimension that we see her access and... Yeah, and the, the smiley men. Yeah, they're totally that's different true. things. I think, they're, I think they're unrelated concepts. Yeah, I think I, I think, think my interpretation is the right interpretation. Yeah, I think... Uh, <laughs> can, or, sorry, can I go... Uh, I wanna... So, I had, I had interpretations on, um, like... So I think, so there's two, yeah, I, I think there's two sort of things that jump out immediately um, that are sort of common 
sort of visual representations is that one like sort of immediately was uh before he turned around it was like the mask it was like sexual abuse um mm -hmm. because there with the um with the sort of like very large looming man sort of like peering over at at her like sleeping is like right that's like immediate yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but then they got with the masks, and it's, I, I like the I like the interpretation of the that you know they're just faceless because it's just whatever man, right. Um, but also like, in about every, it, it's 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 like almost shorthand to show a cult of just like people with masks, like smiley masks. On. Right, right. It's so common for for some reason. It's just like everyone does it, and so it's like, is that is that the situation? But then, like, what are they actually? I mean, I mean, who knows? Maybe they could be going for demons. Like, yeah, they right. just they don't explain it at all. Like, well, so here's the thing. I have a feeling that it might be all of them, and we're so inconsistent with her character that we just can't find a clear interpretation because right. we can't. We don't have enough time, or we don't want to say what we're actually trying to go for. So yeah, I don't know. I think I think any interpretation is valid because they're so weird with it, and they don't just tell you like they do everybody else. And when they show you, they show you in weird ways. The fact that they were so vague with it made me think that it was something darker, like sex trafficking or something like that. But I totally right. see a cult kind of thing. It could be a Black yeah. Widow kind of thing where it's like, oh, because she like, like says like spells and Latin and stuff. So maybe it could <laughs> be like a cult trained to be a killer kind of thing. Because it's also, she also straight up says that she killed those men. She killed the smiling men. Right, She's like, right. I killed 15 mm -hmm. people and I smiled about it. Which yeah. also made me think sex trafficker, because like, that's why she would kill them and not be right. sad about it at all. Yeah, but, I'm yeah. an invisible man. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> yeah. I think... Kind of, kind of the same. I, yeah. I'm biased because it was my hot take, but I don't know. I think that's the strongest one, but this movie is so inconsistent with her specifically and they were so vague about her backstory and i think you could be like maybe it's demons maybe it was a cult maybe it was all three who knows yeah um you want to know what the best part of this whole movie is is when Ileana's like slashing at the bear with her big sword and then like mm -hmm. the landscape like flashes between like yeah, that's cool. super red cool. like hell limbo and like cold blue like night sky like just mm -hmm. in flashes yeah. that she's like hitting the bear that's so sick like, that's the one moment Actually, where I felt like this movie was, like, kind of in sync on the very particular comic book it's, like, based on. Yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah. something that feels sort of abstract and surreal about it in a big, colorful way. And I was like, this is what I mm -hmm. want more of. What I do really like about this movie is that I like, I like that people get hurt in this movie. Because yeah. I feel like it, it's definitely a pitfall of the superhero genre, right? We kind of talked about this already, where it's like everybody's inv invincible, so who cares, like... We'll tell you if someone dies, but for the most part, nobody's going to get hurt ever. But so I like it. Like, whenever somebody, like, falls or, like, takes a hit, they're like, oh, they're injured now. And they're going to be injured for a little bit. Like, uh, when she, oh, like, gosh. gets branded and she, like, feels around or, like, every time he uses his powers and, like, smacks into the ground, he breaks his arm. Or, like, with Ileana, where, like, the bear, like, throws her and she's been doing all this cool shit, but she just, like, lands really hard and, like, her sword goes away and she's out for the count for a little bit. Like, I like that falling down and getting hurt like has consequences and they're right. not just invincible yeah they definitely um you know there's definitely this sort of like anime like oh i'm hurt but i could still fight or whatever um <laughs> that sort of perpetuates a lot of uh um you know you could you could see it in like superhero stuff and occasionally or whatever but um mm -hmm. i think it's definitely good and telling that they're like children who were not trained to fight um yeah that, this isn't a hospital. Right. This because it's not a hospital. They haven't been <laughs> trained at all. They literally just yeah. let the let I'm the um, let the rocket boy hospital. like yeah <laughs> go around in circles and smack against the ground a thousand times. Yeah, um, therapy. Th yeah, therapy, I think. Um <laughs> we check right? my watch. Yeah, we're like they they're like, what is he doing? And she was like, I think he's trying to hurt himself. I was like, that that's they're not getting help then. This is bad. <laughs> Xavier wouldn't stand for this. Yeah. Maybe you would. Maybe, yeah. I think Xavier, did we decide if Xavier's fucked up or not? I have not been paying it's attention to X-Men. Like, he's, he's nuanced. 
he's yeah, got he's got issues, but he's a good guy, you know. These kinds of movies are so scared to be critical of anything that came before it, you know. Yeah, Which maybe. is like which is I don't know. It's weird to say because like the only movie I can think of in recent memory that seemed to be sort of in any way turning a critical eye to the media that came before it is like Last Jedi and people mm-hmm. got so fucking mad about it <laughs> yeah and like yeah I, oh yeah i like, feel it, like that was such a big swing i feel like this is a movie that would greatly benefit from just being about like hey professor xavier runs this program and it's fucked up and these kids aren't okay like yeah that would be super cool and interesting it wouldn't ruin x-men it would be like an interesting mm-hmm. cool story apart from it and like yeah i think I, I which think is that, kind of yeah. what like dark phoenix was trying to do but Dark Phoenix was boring. Yeah, I literally cannot remember a single thing about Dark Phoenix. I, that, that movie like, I remember watching end. the movie. That's, yeah. that's yeah, all I, my memory sticks. The, the tension between um, Raven and Charles is that Charles keeps sending all of the like young mutants out to go do missions. And right. he's the one who's getting all of the glory from it. And yeah. they're, they're like risking their lives constantly. Like Gene got this weird radiation right. because of it. And like there he doesn't suffer any consequences which it in turn even though they ruined it with the trailer like you see that happen in real time right. where raven spoiler alert dies and, <laughs> and then like beast is like charles like you are the only one who's being affected here like everyone looked up to raven and this sucks for everyone and you're only making it about you you always make it about you and it's not right. just about you and you're messed mm-hmm. up bro even though you think what you're doing is right yeah I think think at the end of it, like, the the problem is that in the end of it, I think, like, Charles Xavier, like, was still, like, in the right, like, if I remember, maybe he wasn't, I don't know, but, like, I feel like if they, if they very clearly stated it was like, huh, if we send children out on these, like, dangerous, like, maybe we should be teaching the children how to be children instead of how to be, like, killers. Mm -hmm. Well, it it wasn't exactly... Like, oh, no, we shouldn't be, like, saving people who need saving. It was mostly that, like, it was for the glory of, like, the the X-Men name and the Xavier name. And so the fact that he ends up, like, changing the name of the school and leaving and going off to drink tea with Eric or whatever, <laughs> playing <laughs> poor man's chess. God. That is I what literally... I literally... Yeah, he, could, he gets, like, re- I think it's... It would, like, it would, like people would be so fucking pissed if they did that and instead of the ending being like i was wrong the school is different um that like he was like that people like prove that he was just they you know wasn't as good as people i people go insane like if you if you take a beloved character and make him like not as it, it, you kind of like take a new light on it, like Luke Skywalker him. <gasps> yeah, if you Luke Skywalker oh, him and say that, huh? People change as they age, and perhaps um, even become like Blonde. less heroic, more jaded. Uh, mm-hmm. Like that, you know. People people get really mad. People get really <laughs> right, mad about yeah. that. I noticed that people don't like okay. that. <laughs> It is oh, tricky, man. though, when, like, you build up your character to be the one semblance of hope in an entire galaxy, and they literally have so much hope in the light side that they won't fight the most evil person they've yeah. ever encountered. Right. <laughs> I that's think that's, that's really a little really tricky that... when they're like, I'm gonna kill my nephew! Wait, just kidding. <laughs> I always think that it's so funny that people are so mad about Luke being not even bad just like less excited about being good in last jedi Mm -hmm. when like one of the like staples of like old school pre-disney expanded universe was this whole series of novels where luke like turns to the dark side eventually and then has like a darth vader redemption arc at the end of his life like Which, you know, it's not, like, a super popular thing that everybody knows about, but, like, in the, like, old-school Expanded Universe stuff was, like, a pretty prominent series of books. It's, like, people were into that. Like, Mm -hmm. I just don't... I don't get it. I don't get any of it. Movies are cool, and Last Jedi's good, and everyone Last Jedi is great! Fuck everyone! (laughs) 
fuck out of my mind. Last Jedi's great. So good. I like the movie. Last Jedi's good. I think we can talk right. about it later. We will. We'll it's have not- our own episode. <laughs> I- <laughs> we'll have our day. <laughs> yeah. okay. Before before we like completely remove ourselves from the new mutants, I do want to yeah, point out to everyone a very important fact that the wolf's name, uh, the the actor that plays the wolf, his name is Chuck. So, oh nice. So, I want. I and want it's also know that. funny that William plays a dire wolf. <laughs> That's a little because because of Game of Thrones. Oh, the, the oh yeah. Game. <laughs> the, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the same, you know. Yeah, because there's a giant uh, wolves, and that's like a it's thing. The, it's the like a thing. Also. You're like, it's now a, she's a wolf. Uh, full circle. <laughs> I gotta say, I think this is like one of the most accurate depiction depictions of like a young lesbian I've ever seen. It's like, so the second, good. The second she was on screen, I was like, aha, the lesbian. <laughs> like you know, like it was just like I like I know this person. Like you know, it's just it's a really good depiction of like a reality. You know. Mm-hmm. natural i was about to be i was about to throw hands i was about to chuck bows if they were gonna if this was a queer baiting moment yeah, like, like, like oh, just she's straight. Straight. i was gonna be like bitch no she's, she's not. like when she's like um there are two people up here did you just call me a nobody and then she like catches her and they look at each other i was like that if they yeah. do not roll with this i i will quit force quit literally everything <laughs> yep. As soon as as soon as I did that, I went. Um, I wrote immediately in my notes. Oh my god, these bitches gay. Good for them. Good for them. Yeah. And I am. <laughs> at, oh, my next note after that was uh, um, that Danny's quirk is trauma. Um, yeah. <laughs> they're all yeah. quirks are trauma. Yeah. They're all traumatized. Yeah. That's the point. My honest to god oh, reaction to it was just them. like as soon as I as soon as they started really playing it up, I was like. They're not gonna, because I would have seen everybody making a big-ass deal about it if they did. But I guess nobody, I just nobody saw this movie is why. No one watched <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, nobody saw yeah. this film. Yeah, I, haven't, I didn't hear about it before. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, can we talk about when she she's asleep or dead or whatever, and she's waking up and she's in the forest and her ghost dad shows up. And they have this interaction of lines where she's like, he, the dad's like, you have to fight the bear. And she's like... But it's so big, and then the dad goes, "But oh, you're whatever. bigger." You're bigger. <laughs> and, then, and then she wakes up. She wakes that up. And she's like, I'm huge. I, I'm so big. I, honestly, when she did that, I like legitimately thought that she was gonna wake up and like grow to super size or whatever. <laughs> like she yeah, would she become was, her she own. She was just like, gonna legend of like, Korra. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> They're like she's like he's like you're bigger and I was like I was like dude she's gonna fucking Hulk out it's gonna be sick and they're gonna have like a battle and I was like okay it's... that'd be so good oh man uh, Jackson this is bear hey, kaiju stop um well it's not Bear's real not kaiju. is the thing but it is a big sized animal okay they are it's kaiju but it's I our spirit is kaiju though. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking because it's like a projection of her mind, right? But she makes it's not she an makes organism. It real. Hold on, she makes it's it so real you... enough. Like I think they're immortal, but I think they're very real for the time they are existing. That's true. That's yeah, true. remember because she got branded. That's the whole thing. They were like, "Oh, they are real in a sense." Right. Right. They're like the brand yeah, was like you, really like meant you. to be like From okay. What happens is not just you know, a dream, or, like, just to fuck people up. Right. It's, like, what happens in the thing actually does, like, have permanent damage. Right. If then, you yeah, die in the game, true. you die in your life. What's okay, yeah. yeah. It could fight Godzilla. Yeah. Yeah. Are we gonna talk about the oh, live-action Clifford the Big Red Dog? Are we gonna talk about that? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. What? Have you seen... Okay, so we've all seen the horrible oh. Big Red Dog CGI that looks weird and bad. Oh, have you seen... What? No, it's it looks god awful. Have that you seen? Fine. Have you seen the puppet that they used to put the CGI over it? Because that thing's a fucking nightmare. What? I haven't For seen this. Puppet. Have you it's seen like, this? Hold just, on, hold on. It looks like a puppy. It just looks like a regular dog. No, hold on. I was gonna say, no, no, I thought no, no, it was no. fun this that they the were puppet. making a puppy giant rather than a full grown dog. I thought that was a fun yeah. choice. No, this is the. Hold on, I found the picture. I'm gonna send this to you, and it's gonna blow your mind. Cause it's the worst thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Okay. Every, everybody hold on 
I this don't know that I always agree. This is the, the puppets that they use, and then they put CGI on top of this. But this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Mm. Jackson put it in the stream. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, that's horrifying. <laughs> that yeah, that's what it is. Why is it, it still red though? It looks like a sex toy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see it yet. I'm just imagining <laughs> things. Stuff. Put it things. on the stream here. Uh, it's okay. a real bed. It's like, yeah, I don't know why it's like ribbed for my pleasure. Well, it's, it's like, it's oh, like, like fleshy, yeah. but also a skeleton. Oh, I found there's, another there's image. too much and too little. <laughs> It looks Hold like on. um, it looks like the war horse, you know, that was yeah. like going on tour, the, the Broadway. They're like, oh, yeah, the but bucket. if you like skinned oh God, it alive. Oh no! Oh, I don't like look. It's looking at me, dude. Oh no! <laughs> um, for those it looks who, like a uh, uh, for those who are listening to the podcast only, and you wish oh, to you're know, missing out. uh, yeah, one, you're missing out. Um, it's and hard two, to describe. It it's... is hard to describe. Yeah, if you just, like, imagine, like, if just the skin of Clifford was, like, controlled by two people, um... In shorts and red shoes. Yeah. And the people were also wearing red. Um, yeah, just the, just the skin with Swiss whole cheeses around, like, yeah. around, like, Swiss, Swiss cheese holes. There's Swiss the one. Cheeses. Swiss whole cheeses. That's the name oh. of my punk band. <laughs> Swiss Jesus. And like, it doesn't have any ears, and like, it's eight feet tall, and like, it's just the worst thing I've ever seen. And it's hard plastic, too. Yeah. It's like it's rigid. Like, it's hard, unfeeling plastic. <laughs> it's yeah. like if a dildo came to life. It was like, <laughs> <Right>. hi! <laughs> I was gonna yeah. go with Snake Barney the Dinosaur, but with holes. Yeah. Yeah. Swiss cheese, Barney the dinosaur snake. It's really, it's really challenging. I, I feel like you just activated a Russian sleeper agent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like those words have never been spoken. The Winter Soldier is going to burst in it. They're like, prove you're not a robot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Swiss whole cheese, Barney dildo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun contest for our listeners. Find out if you're secretly a sleeper cell. <laughs> I'm um, always playing that game. <laughs> so, okay, do we have any final thoughts about New Mutants? Oh man, because um, we've been pretty I mean, comprehensive can... thus far. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think I've pretty much stated my case. I wanted it to be. I wanted to have something to say. I think but if they was... do a sequel, I, I will it. enjoy it. I enjoyed this one, definitely. Oh, fucking, one of the things I was talking about with Keisha before we started was that uh, you guys should all watch Legion, which was like an X-Men franchise TV show that Noah Hawley made for FX, where uh, mm. Dan Stevens played the titular character Legion in like a... It's like a lot of the same sort of stuff, but it's mm. like super crazy and surreal and heightened and very like Kubrick, Kubrickian, Kubrickai, uh, <laughs> Kubrickai, very Kubrickai. <laughs> um, but it's like all about like you know X Men mutants in like a like a mental institution and sort of like dealing in that sort of space. But it's like bigger and weirder and more fun to watch. Um, mm-hmm. And like. I don't know. It's like what I said to Keisha was like, imagine what you like kind of secretly hoped in your heart that this movie would be. That's kind of what Legion already is. It's really fucking good. And there's only a couple of seasons and it's on Hulu, I think. And Legion is good. And Aubrey. And I trust Jackson because he doesn't, he's not always a TV watcher. So he recommends a TV show. Yeah. Then, Then you should watch it. Props good. Probably good. Um, Okay, yeah, do you guys want to And hear... I recommend... Oh, I was going to recommend X-Men Evolution, the cartoon from the early 2000s. Right, right, it's right. It's on Disney+. Plus. Oh, tight. <laughs> uh, okay, oh, so do you guys want to hear a five-star review of The New Mutants? Oh, very yeah, much so. Okay. Lay it on me. I've got to... F- I've got to make a pick, because a lot of these are similar tones, 
and I gotta make a decision on which one I want to do. You you know in your heart. Okay, okay. I'm just, gonna rapid, I'm just gonna rapid fire all three because I think they're all okay. fun in their own way. Okay. First one, five stars. It's basically a horror movie, and I am into that. Period. <laughs> Dude, facts. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Second one. Did Adeline write that one? <laughs> I did. Second one. What was with all the complaints about this? This movie was great. It was marketed very poorly, and that is its only downfall. That's the only one. No other. Problems. I wrote that one. That one I wrote. And this final, <laughs> this final, final review says. I'm a fan of comic books, and this movie really brought those characters to life. I loved it. I will watch it again. <laughs> Jackson wrote that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right, cool. where's, where's, yeah, where's my review? Yeah. <laughs> Find a one star. Yeah, where's the one star that's just like bad? <laughs> no, no, no. Here's my review. Bad. They could have all been pirates, and we didn't know. <laughs> Where were the pirates? We, that's not part of the podcast. That didn't make it. Make the, that's going to be oh, confusing. Shit, no. <laughs> oh, boo. Okay. Yeah, that my review, be lesbian couple was good, needs more pirates. <laughs> <laughs> One star. Good lesbians. No pirates. More, more pirates. More pirates. Like pirates. <laughs> more pirates, appropriate amount of lesbians. Yeah, thank you very much. Do not adjust I only like pirate lesbians. media. <laughs> I mean, they can have more. I don't care. This less is bad. Uh, we didn't okay. bury any gays today. <laughs> no, Hell we yeah. did not. Anyway, my name is Jackson McMurray. My name is Adeline McMurray. My name is Keisha Rhodes. I'm Satchel. And this has <laughs> been No Nerds Allowed. <laughs> no <laughs> Nerds, No Nerds Allowed. That's Perfect. our new song. I wrote it. Excellent. Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. I forgot to plug oh, sure. everything. Oh. Uh, Come back. First of all, open the doors back up. Come back in. (laughs) First of all, Satch, do you want to plug anything? Your own stuff. Uh, sure. Um, I I am uh at Almighty Satchel on Twitter, um, and Satchelface, uh, spelled not how you think it is on YouTube. You'll just have to find it. (laughs) Maybe I'll put it somewhere. (laughs) <laughs> Can I just say sure. not to be a suck up, but like I think Sag, you are like a top tier Twitter follow. Yeah, Thanks. you are I, among I... my favorite. Tw- you made a meme like fucking six months ago. I guess you had just gone to IKEA, and it was a meme of Doctor Manhattan being like, "I'm tired of this IKEA. I am caught in the tangle <laughs> of their deals." And I think about that like all the time. I think it's so funny. <laughs> I'm allergic to IKEA. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, why is that? I don't know. When I walk into an IKEA, I literally can't stop sneezing, and my eyes get all red. Oh wow! I think it's like some kind of treated wood that I'm not familiar with. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Anyway, Keisha lives a sad IKEA list life. I just can't just go in IKEA. Sanch is very good on Twitter and worth the follow. Uh, I appreciate it. If you are watching our stream right now, hey, thanks. We appreciate we it. We love you. We love that people show up for this, even if it's not a lot. We love having our little corner of our audience. Um, but uh, if you're, you can go ahead and subscribe if you want to do that uh, to the YouTube channel. That. Uh, also, anybody can do that, but just particularly we'll reach out to the people watching right now. Um, but also, I just released a big old honking video on the No Nerds Allowed YouTube channel. Just the newest installment of my video series where I watch every streaming exclusive movie ever. Um, oh and I God. had to watch... If you count Borat 1, I had to watch 20 films in 30 days for uh, this this video that I finally got out. Uh, and wow. you know, if you just want to watch it, that'd be cool. Cause it took a lot of work to put together. Um, and on top of that, you can also follow us on podcasts. We upload these, you know, just to podcast services with nice audio and, you know, maybe some edited bits and theme music and stuff. If you are interested in that more than listening to our low quality streams, um, and but we missed out on stream only goofs. That's true. So you gotta it. watch Turn both. into the stream. Yeah, we're gonna get the cats. Uh, um, and then also Twitter, Adeline at Hollaback Horse, Jackson at Jepper Pack, like Pepper Jack, but backwards. And the podcast at No Nerds Pod. Uh, am I forgetting anything? 
You, you can should. follow me, Keisha Rhodes, at Real Donald Trump. Just kidding. Don't follow <laughs> that. Oh, no. Don't no, follow Keisha. that. Please don't. <laughs> That's um, me tweeting. <laughs> anyway, okay, yeah. Now we splice in the outro that we did. I'm All right, bye-bye, bye, folks. To the magic of editing. Incredible. Uh, I'm going to stop recording. Yeah, same Damn same. it. Uh, nice. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for Just showing kidding. up, Satch. I'm stopping now. Yeah. yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. We really appreciate it. You're one of our favorite guests to have on. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> great. Thank you. All right. Yeah, no, I like being a part of this. It's cool. Um, I uh, I do tease the restroom, so I'm going to peace out. Yeah, that's so, fine. Okay, really. cool. Bye, Satch. Right. We'll talk to you next time. See you guys. Uh, okay, yeah, should we just stop the stream? Anybody got any final... Are we still streaming? Yeah, we're still streaming. Yeah. I don't know, just hanging. Chill, J chill. We'll stream ahead. Also, thanks for using my name. Yeah, it uh, was the best one. I was trying... That was that was what I was looking for, <laughs> truly. It came It came to me in a dream. Just Well, it came to me a few days later. Like, just <laughs> randomly. Just thought about it, you know. It just, just landed in my lap. What should I call this? audio file uh, okay i'm gonna stop in just a second i'm navigating chrome because i was minimizing the workload on my computer hey teacher leave those kids alone <laughs> why did they use that fucking song for the trailer it's so bad Who i don't know it doesn't make sense we don't need no I thought you were making fun of Birds of Prey again, which is why I stopped you, because people wouldn't get that joke. Yeah, remember in Birds of no. Prey when they used a slow cover of Hit Me With Your Best Shot in the actual body of the film? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. great. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop streaming now. <laughs> Thank you guys okay, for cool. watching. We really appreciate all you guys that show up. After and... that solid Birds of Prey burn. <laughs> and we love you so much. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. We loathe you.